Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage The Vault Series. Today's clip also comes from an interview we shot at Muscle Shoals Sound back in 2008 with the Swampers. This time we're talking about when Paul Simon recorded there, and how that happened, and how excited Paul was to knock out the reason he came there for a week ended up just taking a day. So they ended up cutting a lot more of his album than we ever planned on happening. Hope you enjoy it, and if you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Again, the Swampers. So, um, how did the uh, now Paul Simon sessions? They were here in the soul, the old Muscle Shoals sound uh, that we're in, in this room. In this room. And um, what all songs did you guys do with them? Well, he came to record uh, uh, "Take Me to the Mardi Gras." He he called and. and told Jimmy that he wanted to one song manager called and said they want to record one song and uh, they had heard I'll take you there by the Staples Singers and they wanted the Jamaican band to play on this take me to the Mardi Gras and uh, they talked to Al Bell and Al Bell said it wasn't a Jamaican band it was these guys in Alabama <laughs> we get a call from Phil Ramon Phil how you doing, man? I had met him a long year time ago. He said, hey, I want you to, can y will y'all work with uh, Paul Simon? And I went, did you say Paul Simon? He said, yeah. He said, yeah. How much you want to pay you? So he just laughed. He says, I need to book four days. one song. And they called and talked to Jimmy and Jimmy worked the deal up. But we got the song, I think, on the second take and so we had all this time. We had four days to do for one song. That's the way he kind of worked. And uh, But we weren't used to doing it that way. We was used to cutting a song every two or three hours. And so after two hours He's standing up here looking at the voice of the theater speakers, hearing the playback of Take Me to the Mardi Gras, saying, That's it. That's it. And uh, I mean, he couldn't believe it because, you know, he, he definitely wasn't going to leave then because he had to pay for three more days. <laughs> this time he needs four days to come up with the arrangement. So, uh, Phil comes in, Paul comes in, very nice, very gracious, very nice guy. And so uh, we were, I think, I think we just started right fresh, just started going into the song. We had our part ready to go in 30 minutes. We were ready to go. And Paul said, well, that's it. And Phil just, just go jumping all over himself. He's going nuts. Put the machine in record so they cut the thing, right? We had the tape. It was done. Then Paul says, uh, Barry, by every indication, this song is about a person that wants to go to the Mardi Gras. And by every indication, he's going to go with that Mardi Gras and have the best of times. He said, Barry, somehow it doesn't say that. So somehow we need to get us to where even though it doesn't say it, he might not get to go. I said, what? <laughs> he wanted us to make it feel like the tracks that he was going to get to Mardi Gras, but it never said it. And that's what he does all the time. It's like a triple double entendre or something, or a triple meaning in a record there. You're you're implying one thing, but you never say it. You know what I'm saying? 
and you can feel like there's something going on in a record, or the record is talking about something when it's actually talking about something else, just by the playing. And I said, boy, this guy is deep, deep. And so he just sat here on the floor right in here, mm -hmm. and he said, y'all gather around. and said, if y'all hear something y'all want to record, just pick it out. And so he started We'll record playing. whatever you like, well, so yeah. you, whatever song you want to record. We became we his co-producer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we did, he, he remember he played uh, One Man's Ceilings, Another Man's Floor, uh, Kodachrome, and we was just picking them, boy. As, as so we, we like that Kodachrome one. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so then we started cutting them, and he wound up staying the whole time, and we cut over two thirds of the album. <laughs> Come to cut one, and kind of tickled us. And he came back to do uh, "Love Loves Me Like a Rock." He had already recorded the track in New York with some New York musicians. Jamaica first. What's that? Jamaica first. Jamaica first, and then, and then New, York, New York, and then the West Coast. And uh, there was only a guitar on it, though. And uh, he brought track here with just his guitar on it and, uh, and it had the Dixie Hummingbirds and we, with him. we overdubbed the bass and drums and, and guitar. guitar.